Welcome to Mayor's video training series. In this video, you will see how to perform a manual timing test. When performing manual timing, there are several things to consider. First, what pre-fault do we need, if any? What fault quantities do we need, and how are we going to monitor the relay? Pre-fault. Some relays need to have polarizing voltage or possibly a stabilizing current applied prior to the test. I've turned on three phase nominal voltage and I'm going to turn on three phase at one amp as a prefault value. Prefault time needs to be set. I'm going to set it in cycles rather than seconds for 120 cycles. Next, the fault time needs to be addressed. Nominal voltage is still applied. I need 18 amps three phase to perform this test and I want to see the results in cycles. The last thing is how do we want to monitor the relay. By default input 1 is used as trip. This means as soon as input 1 activates the test results will be captured. Latch is turned on so that any contact bounce will not affect the timing test accuracy. As always, it's a good idea to run off voltage and current. I'm going to accept the changes and I'm now ready to press play. Press play. Prefault time is counting down and now as the trip time is running and there's our answer. Now that we have a valid timing test, we need to add it to a report. Click on the report button, add results to report, and here's your default report. Timing test is not very descriptive. I can change this to whatever it makes more sense. In this case, three phase time. If we know the min and the max value, we can also have the report declare a pass or fail for us. I measured 173 cycles, so I'll put a minimum of 170 and a maximum of 180 and it declares a pass for me at this time. Accept the changes here and we're ready to move on to the next test. Thank you for your time.